प्रणाम से दी लोटस फीट ऑफ भगवान डियर ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स टुडे वी हैव द मटेरियल पब्लिश्ड इन तेलुगु वर्षन ऑफ सनातन सारथी इन द मंथ ऑफ फेब्रुवरी 2001 we know the moment we see swami we feel energetic we feel enthusiastic and we turn dynamic because of the absence of darshan physical for a prolonged period of time we feel the pangs of separation we feel very lonely isolated and even feel weak physically also so swami's darshan has wonderful impact on everybody and swami talking to students and teachers every evening there in the veranda can be considered as a mass interview interview to thousands at a time all of you see him thousand will hear him but all are benefited am i not right this is more or less a mass interview indeed listening to swami private conversations of this kind apart from public discourses will have the benefit of knowing him in spirit we will understand him spiritually which will ultimately help us to experience him spiritually therefore it is necessary for all of us to know our god our dear god to whom we pray just to pray without knowing him is only mechanical and a routine but if we know him understand him and then pray we have the fruits thereof that's what Sej Chagaraja said long ago that one has to know the God whom one worships. Then Bhagavan that evening chose to spoke on the health. He said that one should be slim and trim. You should not feel heavy you should be able to get up immediately after having your food you should not feel as if you are dragging your body no 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 and further the body is so hefty but to some people the legs are thin legs are thin but the body is very well built baba said such a body is like a building with pillars which are very weak and the building may collapse any time so poor legs cannot bear the heavy weight of the body and that's the cause sometimes for arthritis the bone problems so one should not be um heavy bodied or uh, one should not give chance for obesity that's what bhagwan said swami said if you become a slave to your taste know that life is a waste life is a waste 
if you become a slave to your taste then bhagwan started speaking about the past around at least um 25 or 30 years ago bhagwan used to visit a, a district by name east godavari in the state of andhra pradesh he visited every village in that district and swami went on telling you know in those days i used to travel throughout the day sitting in the car the car has to pass through so many towns to reach that place in spite of long journey believe me or not i don't touch anything on the way i don't eat i don't drink and further bhagwan said that he had a driver by name rahim and swami said that he used to give fruits to rahim sing songs for him tell stories so that he would not sleep in the night while driving and then swami also said i used to joke with rahim the driver oh driver rahim you are in the front i am in the back seat as the car speeds up all the jolts come to me not to you and then bhagwan started mentioning about another episode from ramayana you know rama lakshmana are the two brothers and sage viswamitra wanted the two brothers to follow him to the forest to protect yagna and yaga which he decided to perform because the forest was full of demons which always attacked sages and saints therefore viswamitra wanted these two brothers to help him not that he cannot defeat those demons he can but the one who performs yagna should not kill anybody that is the discipline so he wanted the help of these two brothers he came to dasharatha the father of rama lakshmana he asked the king o oh dasharatha send your two sons along with me then dasharatha started crying i cannot send them along with you i got these children after very very long period of waiting and penance i cannot part with them then viswamitra said o oh king you made a promise that you will give whatever i wanted now you cannot break your promise o oh, viswamitra i will follow you i will protect your yagna leave my two children alone they are young children tiny tots i cannot live without them then viswamitra said look here dasharatha you belong to a lineage where people lived for truth they died for truth whereas you fellow now you want to break your promise so he insisted that rama and lakshmana should be sent along with him further viswamitra had a o king i don't know what kind of attachment is this you think that rama lakshmana are your sons but you don't know who they are they are actually divine they are divine rama is god himself so why do you worry why do you think that they are just your children 
so telling with swamitra ultimately succeeded in taking these two boys along with him to the forest to safeguard and protect his yajna and yaga there the evening time was fast approaching it was the first halt the first stop where viswamitra made these two brothers come close to him look here rama lakshmana night is fast approaching there will be demons all around they may kill you they may kill you not only that you have to keep awake throughout night to see that no demon would get into this place and you are princess you are the children of a big king and you don't have costly food with the delicious items here in this forest therefore my dear boys i'll teach you two forms of knowledge one is bala v a l a another is ati bala a t a c h i b a l a these two forms of knowledge will make you get along without sleep and you don't have to eat also because you will lose all your appetite don't worry and now bhagwan said look here how dasharatha was deluded here earlier he told i mean sorry how viswamitra was deluded i am sorry viswamitra the sage told dasharatha the father of the two boys why do you think they are your sons rama is god he told him in the beginning to the father king dasharatha and the same viswamitra here in the forest tells these two boys there are demons they may attack you i'll teach you two forms of knowledge one on one hand he said that they are god divine then and now he has forgotten it he has taken them as ordinary boys and he wanted to instruct them so delusion is so powerful that even sages and saints also are carried away by this delusion so at times we may feel that baba is god yes after some time does he know that i am suffering does he know my problems does he know my visa date expired does he know the my return ticket so that they are confirmed or not well here we doubt him but later he is god he appeared in my dream he told me that and this everything had happened so this defect of illusion or delusion and bhagwan said rama ate only forest figs few free fruits available there and he ate those fruits that he wanted and the rest of the fruits he gave to the birds and other animals present around like this boys know that you have to discipline your food habits you should not eat too much swami is this possible to exercise discipline with the regard to food at this age what i mean is i am not prepared to <laughs> discipline my food habits i must have my spicy food the andhra pickles hot hot stuff chilies and all that and i am not 
were prepared. So with that I have put this question in this way. Is it possible to exercise discipline on our food habits at this age? Swami said, nothing to do with the age. Your strong determination, you can certainly regulate. You can certainly discipline your food habits. That's what Bhagavan said. Now I pass on to another episode. Bhagavan himself said this. There were two poets in Andhra Pradesh. Very popular. Telugu literature. Called Tirupati Venkata Kavulu. Two poets. I give the paper with Tirupati Venkata Kavulu. Two poets. And most of the people know their poems because they are very popular. And those two poets visited Baba 50 years ago. Then I said, out of curiosity, Swami, what did they say? What did they say? Bhagavan said, Swami, Bhagavan said this, those two poets told him, told to Swami. What did they tell him? Swami, we pick up words to compose poems. Whereas, words wait to be used by you for composition. Words wait there. The literature waits there to be composed into poems by your divine hands. Whereas we people collect some words and write poems. That is the difference. Then Bhagavan mentioned the name of another great scholar, Ramakrishna Rao, who was the governor, expert in twelve Indian languages. And he, he was the first translator of Bhagavan's discourse. Once in Bombay, he translated Bhagavan's discourse into Marathi language. And at the end of the discourse, the entire audience started clapping, cheers, applauded Bhagavan's talk. And the translator, Dr. Ramakrishna Rao, got up and said, Gentlemen and ladies, please understand that these are not my words. This is not my speech. This is only my translation in Marathi. But original talk is given by Baba. After hearing that announcement, people started clapping for prolonged period again and again and again. That is the nectarine beauty of Bhagavan's divine discourse. We move on to another episode. You know, some fruits, small size fruits, Swami distributes to all devotees and students. One day he asked boys to distribute small size fruits. There are the, something like two, uh, berries. Berries. And he called boy. Boy, see that you distribute only good fruits. Never distribute rotten fruits. It is a sin if you distribute spoiled fruits. You should never do it. Because you have to pay for it later. You have to pay for it. Therefore, select best fruits when you want to give it to anybody. And then they started distributing fruits. But our Bhagwan, as you know, will be carefully watching how these boys are distributing. Finally, at one time he said, Are boys, you are MSc degree students. 
you know only to read and reproduce at the time of examination. But you have no common sense and general knowledge. You don't know how to distribute fruits. Why? You have forgotten this batch of students. You have not distributed the last row of devotees there. What kind of MSC boys are you? You have no common sense and general knowledge. That's what Baba said. And further, he said, Are some of you boys, as you are walking, I saw your feet touching your teachers. You should, you should respect your teachers. This is not the way how you should behave. Students should have all the obedience and humility. Then only you can learn well. That's what Bhagavan said. Suddenly, Swami turned to one student and said, Tell me one thing. Who is the best teacher in your college? Who is the best teacher? It's a very difficult question. The boy did not answer. Swami still insisted, one best teacher. One best. Swami, all are good teachers. What? Little. No, Swami, all are best. <laughs> then Bhagavan said, I know. All are good people, all are good teachers. Some teachers may be harsh towards you. It is for your own good. You should know that. That's what Bhagavan has said. Now I go to the next episode. It was the time that Bhagavan completed interviews and started mentioning about a couple who were privileged to have uh, been granted with an interview by Baba, Baba. Just then. They got interviewed and they came out of the room and Swami was telling about them. They don't know. They, they were just leaving. He looked at us and said, see, do you see that boy? Ah, Swami we see. You know, I call that boy. You tell your father to give up that bad habit. Tell your father that it's not good for him to have this bad habit. Then the boy went home, started crying. The father said, why do you cry? Dad, stop your bad habit. Or else I'll cry. I don't take food. Make a promise that you will give up that bad habit. The father said, what is that bad habit? Smoking. Dad, you smoke. Don't smoke hereafter. Then the father decided not to smoke again. What a transformation that Bhagwan is bringing about. Among the parents, through their children, See that. The children are transformed in his presence and through them the parents are reformed. This is a wonderful thing going on in the present incarnation. Bhagavan at that time started telling everybody, Boys, I'll tell you something that had happened in Vrindavan. Anil Kumar knows that. It was the summer class time and uh, boys had very good lunch, evening tea and Swami started moving towards the auditorium for the evening divine discourse. Suddenly he stopped and looked at a boy. Boy, don't do that. This is not the place for such things. Stop that. The boy said, what Swami? I said, don't do that. What is it Swami? Immediately by the wave of the hand, Baba materialized a photograph where this fellow was found smoking under a tree behind the college building. 
this bhagwan himself mentioned so we cannot hide anything from him you cannot keep anything like a secret so far baba is concerned somehow that discussion turned towards me and he said anil kumar are you eating properly swami i am eating normally are you happy with your pickles and hot stuff i am very very happy swami why do you eat those pickles continuously like that swami in between i love soup dal but pickles are continuous you are always like that and then pointing him to himself he said believe it or not i never tasted coffee or tea till now i don't touch oily stuff i have not tasted biscuits chocolates cakes till now in a, in my school days i used to carry with me a small preparation made out of corn c o r n and with that corn stuff a hard circular preparation is made and rotel zona rotel j o n n e r o t t e l u zona rotel meaning out of corn a circular eatable preparation is made and swami used to carry this to school then i said swami that will be too hard too hard to eat how could you eat that no 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 if you just sprinkle some water over that it will be soft then you can eat easily swami you alone could do that i cannot that's what i felt within myself and bhagwan said while well, all my classmates were having their usual food i only ate this little preparation made out of corn because others should not feel embarrassed i belong to a poor family i cannot afford the rice and other stuff that my classmates were eating so i had to eat that in secret not to embarrass my other classmates how shall we take it what a himalayan simplicity it is what an openness it is bhagwan's life is open book with that that month report concludes now i pass on to the next published in the month of march year 2001 in telugu sanatana sarathi i am so glad that bhagwan has given me this opportunity to make all this material available to english knowing people i don't know really i, I am so grateful to swami because i was feeling so bad that all the material in telugu is not made available to the english readers so the while we are grateful to bhagwan i am thankful to you well what did bhagwan say well that the episode starts this bhagwan started returning from bangalore after summer course usually he comes in the month of june and my report was published in the month of march 2001 it means the previous years as i told you i give bunch of uh, episodes and they publish few of them depending upon the availability and the allotment of pages 
because the whole journey journal is not meant for me alone all should have chances and bhagwan discourses must be printed so the month i say is not the a uh, same month when it had happened no the month i am giving is the month that sanatan sar the reported the event which happened long back am i clear please so bhagwan started returning from bangalore and uh, the whole village puttabharthi was bum was jumping in joy you must have noticed all streets are well decorated all villages decorated the entire village up to the bypass road about 60 to 70 people local villages shop walas they came with motorcycles to receive swami at the outskirts and escort him to prashantinalaya i am reminded of those days of bhagavatam lord krishna must have been received like that from brindavan when he came to madhura so bhagwan baba was received like that with all festivity and gaiety and on the way we learned that swami got down near a village by name Muddanahalli Muddanahalli where a school was founded by Bhagwan Baba which is having 1000 students strength besides number of committed dedicated teachers who are bachelors and highly qualified well in spite of that journey stop over in mudanahalli discourse over there bhagwan reached this place and looked very very fresh he didn't look tired no sweat on the forehead very fresh that is the quality of the divinity so bhagwan was received here a tumultuous welcome was given to him he was received by boys with all vedic chanting dances singing what not band and swami though he reached here at 2:30 in the afternoon he was ready for darshan by 4 o'clock see that he, it is only possible for bhagwan to act like that it is impossible for any one of us when we look tired looking at his schedule itself we will on following the schedule but he looks very much tired that's really wonderful and swami came there at 4 o'clock and started speaking to boys as usual he was mentioning about the super specialty hospital there in bangalore baba said there in super specialty hospital you know within 10 days after the inauguration hundreds of people visited that hospital number of operations were conducted but most of the patients happened to be very very poor and children you know the specialty is in our hospital the patient starts eating the very next day after operation the very next day of operation the fellow will start eating idlis that is speciality and further he said i visited the super special hospital suddenly i saw a young girl 
eating me and smiling at me she was doing namaskar doing namaskar and doctors told me that child was operated on the previous day but she looked so fresh as if nothing had happened that's how things take place in our hospital then i said softly swami during this period of absence the charm of puttaparthi is lost this is a deserted village this has become a god forsaken place we feel very very lonely baba said why do you say like that i may not be here but you people are all here why do you say that the village is deserted you are all here why do you say that then i said swami i am sorry to comment see the happiness around now see the smiling faces now earlier castrol faces no one was happy everyone was morose and serious then baba said no no you are wrong the happiness is within you it is only within you then i said swami excuse me if the happiness is within me what happened to it when you were not here <laughs> how will that it has come out only after you have come here it is within me it came out when you came and uh, i didn't know its existence within during your absence how to please explain bhagwan said no you are the embodiment of bliss happiness is within you but that feeling of absence of swami the very idea of absence of swami covered that inner happiness within you the inner happiness is covered by the idea of separation by the thought of the absence of swami that soul what by one said how real it is we have forgotten our true nature we are the embodiments of truth we are the embodiments of peace we are the embodiments of love but our true identity is forgotten long back because of the thoughts that have come to cover our true nature so mistake lies with our thoughts not with our true nature then the conversation slowly shifted to gujarat earthquake it was the time of gujarat earthquake before swami reached puttavarthi he gave instructions and he sent laris and laris loads of blankets food stuff utensils to the victims of earthquake in gujarat then i said swami we have come to know that you have sent so much of material to those earthquake victims even when you are there in bangalore baba immediately said i don't publicize what i do i do not advertise what i do you tell everybody why because you think that you are helping somebody no one is somebody to me all are my people 
all belong to me so why should i publicize i am doing to my own people there is no need for advertisement that's what bhagwan said what a wonderful idea it is about 75000 sarees clothes to adults and for children utensils bags of rice wheat oil tins shamianas tens around 2000 were all sent to gujarat by bhagwan along with those this material 50 volunteers from prashant nilayam accompanied by elders were asked to go and supervise the distribution of this material to those victims and to supervise the relief operation there really it is really unbelievable then i said swami i cannot express the lot of help you are doing to those victims baba said turning back at t- turning back towards me and said i don't consider it a help at all do you think that you are helping your wife and your children no it is your responsibility to take care of your wife and children all are my children it is my responsibility to take care of them so no one needs to no thank and recognize that's what baba said all right this is the right time to put a question swami you are god why did you allow earthquake to happen there in gujarat <laughs> you would have prevented all by yourself why did you allow it to happen and organize a relief camp like this why why should you make the cry child, make the child cry and say and fondle the baby later why make the child cry and sing a lullaby to make the child go to sleep why why should there be earthquake at all and baba said please note this point what all that happens in the world will be according to the law of nature the nature is the creation of god it goes by its own discipline and it will never cross its limitations and i will not interfere because it is my creation therefore i don't uh, allow any transgression of the law of nature so earthquakes fire break floods all things happen as per the law of nature but to go to the help of the poor and needy is the love of man is the love of man so what happens in the world is the law of nature what a man should do is to have this idea of love of man towards those that suffer poor and needy then swami explained the reason for this natural calamities why should these things happen earthquakes and floods are some fire why swami started explaining i want our friends to carefully note these points because we will come to know 
the main cause behind these natural calamities. Man today has limitless desires. He has become very greedy and is exploiting nature. He goes on extracting metals from the fathomless depths of earth. He goes on digging deeper and deeper, thousands and thousands of feet to extract ores, O-R-E-S, and metals out of the mother earth. Then he also goes deep into the ocean to extract kerosene and petrol. With the result, balance of earth is gone. And the balance of the earth is gone, you find floods. When there is shallowness, hollowness in different parts of the earth, it leads to earthquake. So, the earthquakes and flood, floods are of your making. God has not done anything. That's all a sort of reaction to man's atrocities. Worst of exploitation of nature. Expression, reaction to his greediness, miserliness. Due to limitless desires. That's what Bhagavan has said. So, Swami, is it bad to have desires? Is it bad to have desires? Then Swami compassionately smiled and said, You can have desires, only limited desires, not too much, not too many. When you need some water to drink, a tumbler glass of water is enough. You don't have to bring the whole river water here. So, if a man has limited desires, he will not exploit nature like this. Which is the cause for natural calamities. After all, if you work with both of your hands, if you work hard, can't you feed a single stomach? Can't you fill your single belly? Man does not work. He has become highly selfish, full of limitless desires. And today, as the science is improving, as the science is increasing, control over the senses is lost day by day. That is the cause for all these tragedies. That's what Bhagavan said. We also came to know that while in Bangalore, Bhagavan visited a place by name Alike, A-L-I-K-E, in the state of Karnataka on 31st of January. And Swami told us, you know, I spoke completely in Canada only. Not in Telugu. All the audience were very happy because I spoke in their mother tongue. Now I pass on to the next episode. Bhagavan was speaking about Mahabharat that evening. There are so many stories mentioned there like Pramila Arjuniyam. Gograhanam, Abhimanyu, and the story of Parikshit. He went on telling every episode. Well, such that it made every one of us feel that they were happening then. All the stories were narrated in such a way that we felt a graphic, photographic, panoramic, dramatic picturization of the whole event, which is possible only for Bhagawan and for none else. He made a mention of one important character in Mahabharata, 
by name Arjuna A R J U N A Bhagwan said Arjuna has 12 titles highest titles then i said swami 12 titles how did he get these titles because of his expertise in archery in recognition of his courage in recognition of his victory in appreciation of his triumph over the evil forces Swami said, no, no, no. He could earn 12 titles because of his sense control, because of his spiritual discipline and penance. He could win the grace of God and he could have so many boons and rewards granted. And he was praising Arjuna. I am not a silent man. I know another character in Mahabharata. Bhishma, a senior man, elderly man, a man of peace, a man of tranquility, a man of expertise, a man of sacrifice. The like of whom you don't find anywhere. Swami, do you think Arjuna is greater than Bhishma? then bhagwan said you could understand all my thoughts immediately said bhishma no doubt is a great man bhishma undoubtedly a senior person a wise man a man of penance a man of discipline a man of sincerity and an excellent devotee but he was in the company of bad people he supported wicked kauravas but arjuna was never in the bad company though comparatively relatively younger than him he was quite good being in the company of good people therefore arjuna is greater than bhishma and then swami narrated the story of abhimanyu abhimanyu is the son of arjuna it so happened abhimanyu was challenged by the enemies to fight so he had to go to the war fight with them and died there at a very young man swami a young man married and wife was was in the family way pregnant father was away arjuna uncle krishna was away poor abhimanyu young man died in the battlefield what a pity it is swami i heard that abhimanyu disobeyed his mother subhadra his mother subhadra told him my dear son don't go your father is not here your uncle is not here your wife is pregnant don't go swami is it proper on the part of abhimanyu to go like that disobeying the mother i thought that i could point out some mistake in abhimanyu but our good god will not allow any such misunderstanding he said look here anil kumar when enemies come and challenge you it is the duty of every warrior kshatriya a community of warriors they should go to the war field immediately they should not escape they should not find an excuse 
So Abhimanyu disobeyed his mother as a true warrior because his enemies challenged him. Not only that, had he not gone there, when his father returns home, what would have been his feeling? The father would have felt ashamed of his son. Is he my son who stayed back at home? I am the warrior number one. My son also should be like me. What a shame it is that he stayed back at home when he was challenged by enemies. That would have been the feeling of the father. This Abhimanyu never wanted to happen. And so he faced the challenge. He faced his enemies single handed and ultimately had to die as per the divine master plan. He knows that the entire war strategy was devised by Dronacharya, the expert. He knows it. He also knew pretty well that he was alone against hundreds of people, senior people. But he didn't mind to die, to uphold the name, prestige and the dignity of his family and his father. That's what Bhagavan said. Then, Swami, I have one doubt. What is Kshatra? K-S-H-A-T-R-A Kshatra is a Sanskrit word. But we understand it in English as courage. Courage. English translation for the word Kshatra. I asked Swami, what is Kshatra? Because Swami is always known for new definitions, new interpretations. Yes, Swami turned back with a smile, he said. The valor and courage which always stand by the morality, character and integrity is called Kshatra. The valor and courage which will stand as a support to morality, honesty and integrity is Kshatra. We should understand, my friends, to kill another man may be an act of courage, but it is not Kshatra. You understand? To beat a, a person may be an act of courage, but it is not Kshatra. To maintain your character, ready to die and fight to keep up your character, that is Kshatra. That is the definition given by Bhagavan. The society has to recognize today that such Kshatra, righteous anger, is required today. When we find agitations and disturbances, arson and violence, Everywhere. In no sense can we call it courage. It is all rowdyism. It is all restlessness, lawlessness. But what we need today is bravery, bravery, valor and righteous anger. May Bhagavan bless you. Thank you. Sai Ram. Om Loka Samatta Sukhinom Bhavantu Loka Samatta Sukhinom Bhavantu Loka Samatta Sukhino Bhavantu Om oh.
जय बोलो भगवान श्री साहेब बाबा जी की